Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details of this watch. Guys, today we are talking about an all-timer. This is the Patek Philippe 5074P Minute Repeating Perpetual Calendar. This is a model line that was originally launched in 2002 and discontinued in 2015. In 2009, for a brief moment, a platinum variant, as seen here, was launched. Estimates range from two to five units produced, so you're looking at an extreme rarity. It's also an extreme example of Patek Philippe's uncompromising quality. As you will find, not only does it have phenomenal wrist presence, but in terms of finish and movement architecture, this is the Patek Philippe you dream of. It's large, too, at 42 millimeters, and given the dial design and pagoda-like stepped bezels, it almost looks like a perpetual calendar minute repeater cousin to the 5070 chronograph, and that's not too great a leap of logic. So at 42 millimeters in diameter, it's actually a reasonable 12.5 millimeters thick. It's 48.2 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now we'll throw it on my wrist and you can see it has a lot of presence. It's not excessively broad. At 48.2 millimeters lug to lug, it leaves me some clearance on each side of my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, which you can see well down the barrel. It's flat enough with a multiply stepped bezel that it'll slide underneath the cuff. And then you can see from over the top, I got a little bit of clearance on each side. So if your wrist is as small as 15 centimeters circumference, game on and no problems with the cuff. You do feel the weight though, being this large and platinum. This is a watch that declares itself. You won't forget you're wearing it. The strap, as you can see, is a modern Patek Philippe strap, so calf on the bottom, large rectangular scale alligator leather, gloss finish on the top. You can see that there is a folded edge. There's a monotone stitch, and we have these little pull tab spring bars on the bottom that Patek fits to its current straps that allows you to remove the strap without tools. The watch comes with a corresponding Calatrava cross style, platinum, snap shut, or friction fit deploying clasp. You can see inside Patek Philippe branded, and it snaps shut to give you a little bit more security when it is closed. Now, taking a quick look at the case, the one thing I want to call out here is that it appears that there is a material disparity in the way the watch is assembled. The slide for the repeater is pretty straightforwardly crafted out of white gold. And so you can see that there is a tonal contrast between the repeater slide and the case itself. The case is impressively crafted. And again, I'm getting flashbacks to the 5070. We've got the same sort of welded on lug profile, which is a very old school handcrafted way of making a case, make the case, make the lugs, weld them together, and then remove the welded joint manually to create a sharp break. We've got the fluted edge and the tapered profile of the 5070 lugs. Of course, this is a modern day platform Patek Philippe, which means it has a top Vesselton diamond between the lugs. We even have something approaching the pagoda-like multi-steps of the 5070's uh, bezel, and there's a reason for that. It's because the caliber R27 inside this watch has a 27 millimeter uh, base movement diameter, and the same is true of the Lemagne caliber in the 5070. It's 27 millimeters in a 42 millimeter case, so we have this stepped case and lug profile with a final flange abutting the sapphire, as well as a large and rather broad minutes track to disguise the disparity between the movement and the case itself. You can also see that there's a little bit of a countersink to the crown, which features the Calatrava cross, so it doesn't protrude too much from the case band. The dial is a lovely sunburst blue metallic that is an exclusive for the platinum model of this watch. We have white gold hands. We have polished chapter rings for each of the sunken sub-registers. We have applique white gold vertically arrayed Arabic numerals. You can see that we do have mono counters at nine o'clock and three o'clock. The one at three o'clock gives you the leap year phase as well as the month. And then the one at nine o'clock uh, gives you a combination of your day and then the 24 hour phase depicted by the watch. So you don't want to set the watch at night. So you get this little 24 hour dial that lets you know, for example, whether you were looking, we'll set this so you can see, at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. And you can see as I move along, 
it's pointing to 12. The little white hand is pointing to 12, which means we are looking at 12 noon, not 12 midnight. And of course, if you want to fire up a minute repeater and get the maximum strike, then you want to set it to 12.59. I will do my best right here to get this on point and then hopefully serenade you with what results. Although platinum, with its density, is not the optimum material for conducting sound at high volume, it does have a particularly sweet tone, rendered more so by the fact that this large watch is purposefully large. It incorporates cathedral gongs, so instead of encircling the movement once, these wire-style free-hanging gongs encircle the movement each one and a half times, which creates a much richer sound. The watch does have a perpetual calendar, so it doesn't have to deal with resetting after irregular length months, and it can deal with leap years. Really, you don't need to do anything to it if you keep it running until the year 2100. You could see on the bottom that this is a Patek Philippe manufactured case, and yet it features case maker Jean-Pierre Hagman's original innovation for Patek, which was the sunken repeater slide to keep everything aligned and in good working order and to avoid damage. So Patek Philippe made this case, but it adapted the principal innovation of its longtime minute repeater collaborator. Taking a quick look at the reverse side, the movement has done business in several different Patek Philippe watches. You could see it is the R27Q, so R is repetition, 27 is the diameter in millimeters of the base movement, and then Q means perpetual calendar. You can see this one, of course, part of a series, the Platinum Run, launched in 2009. It features the Patek Philippe seal, which means, at a bare minimum, it was made after mid-2009. Now, you can also appreciate that the minute repeater strikers are extraordinary, black polished across their top, and then you can see how dramatically they've been rounded off and beveled on their edges. We have something that's just as difficult to achieve as a sharp inward angle, pardon the shake right there. Uh, we have these sharp outward angles where bevels meet at the tip of each striker, and remember, those strikers are steel, so this level of finish is not easy to apply to a tiny steel component like that. Now, the bridges feature a lush and lovely Cote de Genève. They, too, are mirror-beveled, and the anglage on this movement is all manual. You will find largely mechanical, or at least mechanically assisted anglage, on lower-priced Patek Philippe watches, not here. This is finished with gentian wood, but it's also started manually with files. We have a rose lathe cut 22 karat winding mass. It energizes a 43 to 48 hour automatic winding power reserve. You can see we have a Patek Philippe Gyromax free sprung balance adjusted in five positions. Gyromax was designed in the late 40s, implemented in the early 50s. It was one of the first free sprung balances that improved precision of adjustment as well as shock tolerance. This one beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is adjusted in five positions. And you can see those Gyromax bolts or nuts that alter the inertia of the wheels at beats weight. Also has a handmade breguet overcoil hairspring, so in every position this watch will keep consistent and even time, and all of this pivots on 39 jewels. It is beautiful in its decoration, and I would say as nice as the strikers and the beveling are, I actually like the particularly broad, luminous, and gr dark to light gradient grooves of these Cote de Genève, which are among the finest I've seen. And then all of this is water resistant only for moisture and dust, which is standard fare for a minute repeater. Uh, it's just part of the territory with watches that do away with case seals in order to better conduct the sound from the inside out. Reach out to Timaso at thewatchbox.com to own this one of less than five platinum Patek Philippe 5074 perpetual calendar minute repeater.